We've got our oxygen masks on at 16,000 feet, ready to shoot one of the most infamous instrument approaches in the country, the Loke DME Echo into Aspen, Colorado. Right now we're navigating on a Victor airway. We're told to expect the Loke DME Echo approach starting from the Red Table VOR. We pull up the approach and select the transition, DBL is the identifier, and load it in for now. We're approaching from the east and the airway we're on will take us to the Red Table VOR. Let's brief the approach. We have the localizer frequency in NAV1, 111.15, and it's ID'd. The approach course is 151 degrees. The airport elevation is 7838. We don't have runway landing distance available since this is a circling only approach, but we intend to do a straight in landing on runway 15, which is about 8,000 feet long. None of the notes apply to us. Our missed approach is a bit unusual. It involves a climbing right turn to 14,000 feet on a heading of 300 degrees. Then we'll fly outbound on the back course of another localizer. This one isn't situated on the airport, but on a high mountain peak near a ski slope south of the airport. We have that frequency 108.5 set up on NAV2. When we fly outbound on a back course, we'll use normal sensing, as in chase the needle to follow the course. We'll stay on that back course to Linz, then turn to 244 to proceed to Glino and hold. We've received the ATIS weather, we're talking to Aspen Approach right now, we have Aspen Tower on COM1 standby, and Aspen Ground on COM2 standby. We're going to cross the Red Table VOR at or above 13,400, then we have a very short leg to intercept the localizer on about a 90 degree angle at Jargu. Once inbound, we have a number of step down fixes in quick succession. 12,900 at Kaiser, 12,300 at FIMSO, then the final approach fix, DOIP, at or above 11,700. When we get configured and start on the final approach course, we have a vertical descent angle of 6.59 degrees down to the runway. This is very steep, more than double a normal 3 degree angle. If our approach speed is 80 knots, a normal descent rate is about 400 feet per minute. But since we're more than double that, we'd be looking at more than 800 feet per minute. Also, 80 knots is ground speed. If our indicated airspeed is 80 knots, but we're up high like this, our true airspeed will be higher. And even with no wind, we may be over 90 knots. Not only does this mean our descent rate will have to be even greater, but it could also push our Cessna 172 into category B minimums. Even if our aircraft is rated at Cat A, if we fly above 90 knots and are in Cat B, it's best to adhere to those minimums. That puts us at 10,220 as the MDA, with 3 miles of visibility. We'll go down to that, and at SAAG, which is 4 DME, but which we'll use GPS to identify, we'll go missed. So, the big risks on this approach is the high rated descent, which could be borderline unstable, the unorthodox missed approach, the 90 degree intercept from the Red Table VOR feeder route to the localizer, and the fact that we'll be higher speed than normal. We're also high altitude, so we want to make sure the outside air temp doesn't get below freezing when we're in the clouds. We're in a Cessna 172, not exactly a high altitude, high performer. So we want to make sure that the temperature and the density altitude are ideal enough for us to make a climb and maintain the standard 200 feet per nautical mile climb gradient all the way up to our missed approach point. We're told to cross red table at or above 13,400 and are cleared for the approach. So we activate the approach and start the descent. We're using GPS to identify red table. We could pull up the VOR2 to monitor it, but we're only using it as a feeder route. We aren't required to monitor a nav aid that isn't providing approach guidance. That nav aid here is the localizer which we do have up on NAV1 and we'll be switching to. When we cross red table, we turn to our 232 course, the feeder route for the localizer. Let's set up the approach course 151 degrees on the OBS on VOR1. The next step down altitude is 12,900, so that's armed in the autopilot. We make sure we're on heading mode on the autopilot so that when we switch to VLOC mode, we don't lose guidance. Now the VOR receiver is pulling in the raw data from the localizer. We have a sharp turn to intercept it. Once established, we can go back into nav mode and start down to 12,900. We only have about 2 miles to get to the step down fix. After that, we go down to 12,300. Don't be bashful with those descent rates. Passing Kaiser, we go down again to 12,300. Again, we have less than 2 miles to get there. We cross FIMSO and now we can go down to 11,700. DOIP is next, the final approach fix. 
We level briefly at 11.7, then we can configure for final. We'll use one notch of flaps and pitch for 80 knots indicated. We're going to use a thousand feet per minute descent rate. We switch over to Tower, who clears us to land runway 15. We only have about three miles on the final approach segment. We could ask to circle when we have the field in sight to lose altitude. Check out our ground speed. Like we said, this high altitude is pushing our speeds into Cat B territory, so we will level off at 10,300 above Cat B MDA. Look at the runway to see how steep our descent is. You can see how tricky this could be in a faster aircraft like some airliners who operate out of here. Those guys need special training to shoot this approach. Anyway, we get to 10,300 and level off. When we get to the missed approach point, we initiate mist by going full power and starting a climbing right turn. We'll unsuspend the approach and it puts us in the sequence to Linz. We're going to 14,000 feet and a 300 heading. We've switched over to approach who tells us to hold as published. We get to 300 degrees, which isn't really an intercept heading as the back course is 303 degrees, but is designed to keep us on the east side of the back course, away from terrain, and we can intercept the back course on our own. Again, even though it's a back course, because we're flying outbound on it, it's normal sensing. So it's to our left, which is why the needle on VOR2 is deflected left. We could turn left to intercept it. We intercept it and a bit later level off at 14,000 feet. When we reach Linz, and we're now inbound to the holding fix Glino. When we get to Glino, the GPS has us do a teardrop entry, starting with a 290 heading for one minute, then a left turn around to intercept the inbound course of 064 degrees. We've entered the hold and completed the approach and missed for the infamous Loke DME Echo at Aspen. Give it a try yourself, and for a real challenge, do it without the GPS. Check out Flight Insight IFR Ground School today at the link here and in the description.